Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock, and I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, also, you're listening to John from Off the Wall Hockey, and you're listening to Peyton on the radio, two of the finest video people there is in the land right there. And uh, we've been doing a video, we've been doing a series, sometimes together and not together, but uh, this time we're getting all together, and as you can tell by their backgrounds, because I'm still in my Seattle high-rise here, we're, we're going to be doing the Toronto Maple Leafs today. I th- this is my second last video of a series we're doing on off-season moves by each team and how it projects for their future. Um Peyton's been doing a similar similar one to this, and uh, John has been doing a similar one to, doing to this. John does it with like other YouTubers. It's pretty cool. I'd highly recommend you check it out. Peyton does too. He's I've did a few with him. He does it on his own. They're pretty fantastic. They come from different perspectives, and uh, that's why we do this. A lot of fun. Okay, Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, it's jam packed. What the Toronto Maple Leafs did for the roster so why don't we just get right into it shall we and uh i guess the first thing um i'm going to start with uh john on this because i know he, he's going to gloat quite a bit <laughs> he, he's a pretty big fan of what toronto has done let's start off with the first i think it was the first move oh no maybe not but it was close to it uh brody brody being added to the defense they just climbed right into that one didn't they john Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm a huge fan of this move. This was right on first day of free agency. Um, they bring in T.J. Brody, veteran guy, right hand defenseman from the uh, Calgary Flames. And man, for the last few years, we've the you know Toronto has been such a hot button team to talk about because they're so talented up front. They've got the big superstars: Matthews, Tavares, Marner, Nylander. They should be going deep into the playoffs, and they they just cannot make a deep run. They're losing in the first round year after year after year. And what's been the big issue with this team? Their defense. They have the goal scoring. They have the firepower to to be a contending team, and their defense has failed year after year after year. And they've made a lot of changes over the past few years trying to fix this de- this defense. I think this is a year that you see significant improvement defensively from the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I think TJ Brody is going to be one of the biggest reasons why he's a veteran guy with a ton of experience. He's played in the playoffs with Calgary and he brings a great two way game, which, you know, they brought in guys like Barry in the past. They brought in guys like CC. These are guys who Barry's great offensively, but his defensive game is is brutal at times. CC, I think, is just brutal in general and shouldn't have even been in an NHL lineup. But they bring in these offensive guys, and that's not the issue here with Toronto. It's their own zone play. And Brody is good enough defensively to improve them in their own zone while still being able to skate and still still being able to move the puck which you have to be able to do in today's nhl so brody's two-way game i think is really going to help this team a lot i like jake muzzin on that back end a lot Uh, he's probably their best defensive guy and and i like the other defensive moves more depth guys they've made as well um, I, I think Toronto's defense is going to be a lot better this year, and I really like the Brody signing. Okay, I'm a, okay this is going to be cool because um, we are, uh, Peyton, Peyton on the radio and I are both from the Alberta area. We get to see a lot of Calgary Flames games. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I could be wrong. Do you get it? I would think I might get a little different spin from you about this. What, do you, what did you think of... Uh, Brody in his last year or two in Calgary there, Peyton, and how would you think that's going to translate for Toronto? Do you agree with John? I I don't mind TJ Brody. Um, honestly, his analytics look really good. He's a really good defensive guy, and he played great alongside of Mark Giordano over the years, and for uh, as an Oilers fan, he was always a, a thorn in our asses, practically. He was playing great alongside of Mark Giordano and complimented a guy like Mark Giordano who plays a very offensive-style game. And Morgan Riley plays that exact same type of level. And now you get a perfect partner to go alongside of 
uh, Morgan Riley, a guy who is used to playing on the right hand side, even though he is a left handed D man. He plays great on the right side. I think this deal's a, a pretty solid deal. Sure, it's a little long for the next four years. It, it might be a, a pain later on, but I think it's a good signing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. You bring in a very solid D man, um, which will complement Jake Muzzin because when Jake Muzzin went out of the lineup there against Columbus, their whole defensive core fell apart. So now you have TJ Brody who adds some kind of stability to that core and honestly I think it's a very good move for the Toronto Maple Leafs and I hate now that we have to see him more because we're in that Canadian division so it's going to be a pain yeah that's interesting yeah I thought he um I thought Brody kind of slipped the last year a bit um that may have something to do with the fact that the lineup as a whole pretty much did as well but though, because Calgary he, Calgary was really rough last year like they hmm. they had changes of coaches they had a really really bad off season last year for Calgary and their defense accord was all over the place they were changing defense accords multiple times they had so many people in and out of that lineup it was a it wasn't a very good looking team and look for TJ Brody to maybe have enough kind of like a rebound season with the Toronto Maple Leafs, especially since he'll be playing alongside of a really good defenseman in Morgan Riley. Could very well be. So I guess what actually happened before that, that we should talk about as well, and it was pretty huge, and I think it was pretty fantastic for Toronto, but we'll see what you guys have to think. And uh, John, the Kapanen trade. We, we that, that was really the first thing that happened because it was still the playoffs when it happened. Yeah. What, what did you think about that little move? I thought that was a really solid move for, for the Maple Leafs who needed to dump cap. Um, we've known that. That's why Kapanen got traded. That's why Janssen got traded. Um, they needed to open up some, some cap space. And for them to get as much back as they did, especially with that first round pick from Pittsburgh for, for Kapanen, I think that's a really solid move. Obviously, it's not something that maybe helps your team right now. You know, you have to wait for that pick to to develop after the draft and whatnot. But um, just, you know, Kapanen to me was a guy that was expendable in that lineup and never you kept w- waiting for him to take that next step. And I mean, being a Bruins fan, you know, with not the realigned divisions, but with the normal divisions, I see the Maple Leafs a lot. And we saw them certainly in the playoffs a lot. And Kapanen was just a guy that you kept waiting for to break out and take that next step Mm -hmm. and and get better. And then he just never really did. And there were he'd, he'd go through streaks where he was really good and then he'd just disappear and he'd be gone. And you'd be like, what, what is Kapanen doing? And then he'd show up for another week or two, and then he'd just disappear again. And that was an expendable guy and a guy that the Leafs could move on from. And and for, for what they were able to get back, especially, I think the, the biggest piece of that trade was the first-round pick. Um, for, for them to get a first for him, that was a very savvy move from Dubis, for sure. Yeah, and uh, Peyton, are you, are you in concurrence with that, my friend? Yeah, I totally agree with John. Uh, Kasperi Kapanen, like, they moved him all up and down the lineup to get him going, and he was never able to find that perfect spot. So now he's going off to Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh really did overpay. You get Philip Highlander and uh, that first-round pick in Rodion Amarov, I think it's a great move for Toronto. You build up that that prospect core for the future, and you're going to need it. Like, Toronto is going to be in pretty much cap hell throughout their entire dynasty with Tavares and Matthews all locked up for a bit. You have those young guys implement into your lineup. It's the same thing as Chicago, right? To win more cups, you need to have a good prospect course. So later on in the years when you're having cap hell, you can throw those young guys into the lineup and see them excel. So I think it's a great move for Toronto. Yeah, um, I was really like, I was wincing when the trade happened. But when I saw Toronto, because I happened to be very high on Amirov, um, mm-hmm. when I saw them pick a mirror off, I was like, oh boy, <laughs> this could really look bad for Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, I, Kapanen was on the, when they traded Kapanen, uh, Pittsburgh did, um, that was for, uh, Kessel in the Kessel trade. There was rumblings then that he just seemed to not have the compete level necessary. And I think that's really what you're saying, John, 
maybe maybe you weren't, but I saw, was Kapanen had the skill, but he didn't seem to have that compete, compete level to take his game to the next level. So now Pittsburgh thinks all of a sudden he's going to, uh, 20, is he 24 now, is going to have that happen? Uh, I don't know, but I think Toronto did, uh, Dubas did a fantastic job getting a, a number 15 pick in a very deep draft uh, for a guy who probably wasn't going to be working out in his lineup in the long run. That, to me, was one of the home runs of the summer. Like, that was absolutely fantastic move. Okay, so we'll move on to maybe a little lesser of moves, but still very important as well. Um, we, we uh, Zach Bogosian, they bring over from Tampa Bay. Um, I'll get both of your views on that, John. Um, I'm not as high on I don't think, as you are. But, I mean, let's say CC goes to – and they'll, 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 then they also pawn off CC to Pittsburgh, too, <laughs> that we just talked about. So uh, They don't really pawn him off, but I don't know why they pick him up. And Bogosian goes to Toronto. Is, um, I think you're a little higher on Bogosian than I am, but what are your thoughts on Bogosian for Toronto, John? Well, I just think he's a really good depth piece. I mean, he's not a guy that, and even looking at Toronto's defense, he's not a guy that has to play night in and night out. But as a number seven, I think he's a really good depth piece. And I was thoroughly impressed with how he looked in the playoffs this past year. Like, he played a really solid bottom pair role for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I thought, you know, he brings some grit. He's not afraid to be physical. Um, you know, he, he was drafted really, really high in his draft year. I think it was 08 or something like that. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head and he never lived up to his draft status, Mm -hmm. but he's still a solid player. And at this point in his career, um, you know, he's what, 30 years old or something like that. You know, he, he's not going to be a star defenseman. He's not going to be a top four guy, but as a number seven and coming off a Stanley cup win and the experience that he gained going on a deep playoff run, um, with Tampa Bay, I just think that's a nice depth piece in a season where you're probably going to need depth with this schedule and playing these same teams over and over. And, um, you know, fitting 56 games into a few months that depth is going to be important this year. And I think he's a valuable addition there and in a, in a bottom pair slash extra guy type role. Oh, okay. I, I thought for some reason you were higher on him than me. We're about the same there. How about, are you, do you, are you with that on Pey- Peyton as well? And not so you can yeah. go into like the overall defense and how he fits in there. Yeah, you know what, Zach Bogosian, I think his analytics don't look fantastic, but him on a PK and him being that solid defensive defenseman is perfect. Uh, Sheldon Keefe was talking about kind of going with seven defensemen, and Bogosian kind of gives you that option of going seven D-men because you could throw him out on the PK and throw him out when you absolutely need a solid shutdown guy to go out there and shut down like Edmonton's top line or Calgary's top line or whatever on the PK or something like that. Right. So I think Zach Bogosian and especially his leadership will do tremendous leaps for that defensive core. Now you have Jake Muzzin who is uh, won a cup. Now you have also Zach Bogosian who brings a lot of leadership and TJ Brody. It's and a massive amount of leadership for Dermot, Sandin, Luttonen, who's just entering the uh, NHL. Massive amounts of leadership, which uh, I think is what Dubas was really focusing on with this offseason with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got to give it that for sure. I mean, having more cups in the room is, is great. And uh, as a seventh guy, I can't really argue with that as well. So... Then we have Thornton, and we have Simmons as well. Am I right? Yeah, Simmons. Thornton, Simmons comes in when you talk about leadership. Um, Tell me about what you think about those acquisitions. And also, finally, with all of these acquisitions, how do you find, say, guys like Sandine fitting in the game? I'm going to go with you guys. You guys watched Sandine last year. Um, I personally think that uh, he could definitely take a position this year. I really liked his game last year. Um, how do you figure this all comes down for Sandine? Do you think that he's got a spot kind of sewed up right now, or does he got to work his way into the lineup? Tell me what you think about Joe Thornton and uh, Simmons 
bringing them in as depth pieces for Toronto. And finally, as you do that, what's your projection for Toronto for the for the future for this organization with all these acquisitions? And John, go. Ahead, I'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, I I am a huge fan of Wayne Simmons. I have been his entire career. He just his style of play is like my kind of hockey it's a style that i love so much uh, the offense is is pretty much gone with simmons he the his star days with the philadelphia flyers where he was a 30 goal guy are long gone but to play him in your bottom six and bring that toughness and bring that leadership and just that that compete level that is something that the toronto maple leafs needed in their lineup and they brought in kyle clifford last year another guy i absolutely love but Clifford left in free agency so you needed to replace that somehow and Simmons I think is a guy with more offense than what Kyle Clifford brings but the same kind of toughness and an ability to stand up for his teammates and that's something you're going to need this season with all of these divisional games where everything is in division you're playing the same team in the Canadian division you're playing the same teams nine ten times this year it's going to be rivalry games night in and night out and you're you need a guy like Simmons in the lineup and Toronto has been one of those softer teams over the past few years and that's been a knock against them and then when they brought they brought in Clifford they kind of got a, a lot of credit for that and now Simmons I think is a similar style move as is Bogosian as he can play that way as well when he needs to Thornton just at, at first I was I was kind of scratching my head at the Thornton deal because I, I look at him kind of as the same thing at this point as what Jason Spezza is and they already have Jason Spezza who's kind of the veteran guy who used to be a superstar doesn't put up those kinds of numbers anymore um, and is just kind of a, a veteran guy that's well liked in the locker room um, now they have two of those guys but I think adding Thornton in there kind of gives them the ability to cycle out somebody when they need to like you can add Thornton to the lineup and take Spezza out or you can take Spezza put Spezza in and take Thornton out or you if someone is is not playing well someone on the wings you can take them out and put in a guy like Spezza or Thornton you're gonna especially with with the with the schedule I think you're gonna see some guys kind of get cycled through the bottom of that lineup to where they're maybe not playing every single game but they're, they're getting in and getting out and getting in and getting out. And again, with this season, I think the deeper you are, the better. And those are two great depth moves, um, from, in, my, in my opinion, just to add to the forward depth of this group. We know that they're talented in the top six, but to have good depth in your bottom six is another really important thing. And Sandine on the back end... Um, I think he's going to have to fight for a spot. There's like there's like eight solid D men there now, um, with Latin and Bogosian, Dermot resign. Like he's he's going to have to work his way into that lineup. I think there's certainly the chance for him to knock somebody out of a, of a regular lineup spot and, and play there but he's gonna have to earn it if he does and i think there's a chance he, you might not see a whole lot of him at the beginning of the season and he might get worked in more and more as the year goes along okay peyton now you always send another lean on it again um same basically the same thing what did you think of thornton and uh i i thought that was an interesting move for sure i was sort of the same way with john um and how do you do you think sandine can land a spot um, you know what, I, I, it's tough going to be on Sandine because you've got a lot of guys that are, are going to be there. I think, I think the best bet for Sandine as a, an Euler fan and a, honestly, as a prospect fan, I would almost send him off to Europe. You could possibly see him in the NHL and you, you could possibly see him take a spot. He might even be seen on the taxi squad, but as you don't really want a young prospect like him sitting on the taxi squad, right? You either want to see him play majority of the games or you want him playing off in Europe and playing some solid games. But I think what you might see is maybe him and Sandine swapping in and out, but that's all dependent on how Keith is feeling about the team because this team is really deep defensively this year for the first time in a while. And I think they might go after more of the older core. I think Dermot might start more over Sandine than anything and over Luttonen. Um, that's how I think for that. I don't, Sandine had a great season last year. 
um, he played in the 28 games. You might see him because his contract, I guess, is going now. So you might see him play a couple more games than usual. But we'll have to see on Sandine Thornton and uh, um, the Wayne Simmons signing. I think Thornton is a really good power play guy. Um, he can't skate very much anymore. He's losing his legs a bit. But for the leadership and the offense that he could bring a bit is going to be really good for that third line. They haven't really had that. That was the biggest struggle for them last year was their depth especially when they traded away Nazem Kadri, Their depth went kind of away a little bit. Um, they had the emergence of Mikhailiev, who I think will be a perfect guy for that depth if he could play that full season like he did last year. He was great for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And now you add Thornton and Wayne Simmons. Simmons brings more of that toughness to the team. Sure, he's not going to be that offensive guy, but he's going to bring in that physicality. And against teams like Toronto, or against uh, Calgary and Edmonton and Vancouver, Vancouver is a very physical team. Same with Edmonton, same with Calgary. You need to kind of match that toughness and bringing in Simmons will match that. And if you're going to be playing Nicholas Robertson this year too, Thornton and Simmons will help that kid out tremendously come into the NHL. And especially with Rasmus Sandin too, if he enters into the locker room, Thornton, Simmons, Spensa, Brody, everyone in that locker room will help those kids develop and really come into who they are. Because it, it, if you weren't having Bogosian on the roster, I don't think you would see Sandine on, on the team. But with Bogosian and all the depth defensemen that they have on the team this year, you might possibly see Sandine start more games than what you might have seen last year. It's funny. We're going to see who is what, how, what happens. I think Sandine's going to earn a spot. I just really loved the way he played last year um, and given another year to get stronger and bigger. I love him. I think, I think Sandin is, is a fantastic player. That's just personally what I, I think he's going to, I, I get the idea that maybe uh, he, um, they, like if he, I'm with you though, if he doesn't earn a roster spot, then he has to go somewhere. There's no way you can have him on a taxi squad oh, or something yeah. like that. There's no doubt about that. He actually has to earn the spot. I, I just have a feeling that he's going to earn the spot. Um, as far as the Thornton, I, I, I'm with you, John. Um, it, it seemed like a very Spezza move. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. The only thing I can say about Joe Thornton and guys like that is they do send give a send of ur- sense of urgency to that room because these guys want to win a cup like now, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and maybe a sense of we want to win the cup for guys like that. So it gives it gives these kids who sometimes um, younger players, and they're all younger players in Toronto. We got to remember, I mean, except for Tavares, but, you know, Marner, all these guys, you can still have the sense of, oh, you've got nine, 10 years to win a cup. You know what I mean? Like, even though you don't want to feel that way, it's just natural to not have that kind of urgency as a guy like Thornton, whose career is probably over this year, can give these guys this urgency like, hey, you know what? I played this many years in the league. I never won one. If you got every year, you got to look at it like this. It's got to be the year this year because it could be. Uh, never happen if you don't have that he's gonna have a lot of education almost like another coach maybe and maybe that's what thornton wants to do down the road as coach or something like that um because he's a very intelligent player and i know i think that uh peyton would be able to tell us his analytics have always been fantastic too right oh yeah joe thornton's always been really good analytically and a good player for um the teams that he plays for and he's a great passer like you want to talk mm-hmm. about a guy that sees that ice so well especially oh, yeah. since he can't skate his vision's unbelievable like mm-hmm. when he was in his prime of his career he was putting up massive amounts of points 114 101 like he was a huge point getter back in the day and Joel yeah. Thornton is still that same guy he just doesn't have the legs for it anymore and he could still be that nice PK or that power play guy. He was playing on a team that wasn't very offensive in San Jose and he put up 31 points as a 40 year old. Mm -hmm. Just think of what he can do on the Toronto Maple Leafs. When you have Matthews, Marner, Tavares, you got a lot of good goal scorers on this Toronto Maple Leafs team. I'm excited to see how well Joe Thornton will do there, especially with 
how well he was playing in uh, Davos. He was almost a point per game there, um, which is, I mean, it's the National League, but Joe Thornton was still putting up a point per game as a 41-year-old in a European League is pretty damn good. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of value there. I, I know one thing. Everybody's going to be rooting for Joe Thornton. Even the opposition is going to be rooting for <laughs> Joe Thornton. It's just uh, you can't help but love Joe Thornton and what he's done in his career and to want him to win a cup. So I like that. Now, my final thing as we go out, um, uh, well, we, we didn't really get into how you project for this year. So how do you think all these moves project for this year? But I also want you to, if you could mention something about there was talk all year about possibly trading Anderson, and they ended up not trading Anderson. Do you think Anderson gets a bad rap because of this defense, or do you think that Anderson was part of the reason why the defense was as poor as it was? I'm going to switch it around, and I'm going to start with Peyton on this one. What do you think their projection for the future is? What's your view of Anderson and uh, how, how he's going to do now with this new defense? I always hate how people blame the goalie more than the defense i'm a defenseman and i should be blamed more than the goalie does because the goalie gets blamed for everything absolutely everything i will make the biggest mistake as a defenseman and i'll go to the bench and we'll all be blaming the goalie and frederick anderson's been a great goalie since he's made his debut he's been putting up great numbers he's Every playoff series he's ever been in, he's been having to carry the Toronto Maple Leafs defensive core. Even especially last year against Columbus, a team that doesn't score very much, was dominating the Toronto Maple Leafs. Their goalies were playing great for Columbus. And Anderson, I mean, he definitely did lead in a couple loose ones against Columbus. But, I mean, that's... Uh, you can't really say very much about COVID. COVID had a lot to deal with, with fatigue with some goalies and some players in play is great. You might see a rebound year for Anderson. He's on his last year of his deal. He's a great goalie. And especially since this defensive core has improved by a ton, I think Toronto Maple Leafs will do really good with Frederick Anderson. And for their projection, I think you can definitely see them as first place in the Canadian division. And I think they'll definitely be able to win a playoff round this year. I think they might be second, even conference finals, especially with this Canadian division. And because you're going to be playing the Canadian division throughout all the way up until the conference finals. So you have a really, really good chance of finally making it out of the first round and making it to the conference finals. In their future, it looks really bright for the Toronto Maple Leafs um, with Brody and Muzzin and Sandine coming through. They got a lot of things to be excited about there in Toronto. Yeah, I, thanks. That's that's awesome, buddy. Uh, I'm kind of on the same level. John, are you on the same level on that, uh, Anderson? And what do you think they project in the Canadian? Uh, uh, I'm I'm a huge Anderson supporter. This guy has had garbage defense in front of him since he's come to Toronto. And if you look at his individual numbers, they've been fantastic with the exception of the 2018 playoffs that he was, he was awful in the 2018 playoffs. Uh, his save percentage was like 870 or something in that series. But if you take that playoff series away, all the other years, pretty much in the regular season, his individual numbers, save percentage goals against were great playoff series huge bounce back in 2019 still they couldn't get it done and he was really good in the playoffs uh this past year his save percentage was like 922 in the postseason this past year i mean what more do you want from the guy i mean he he puts up great save percentage numbers every year his goals against is never really high i mean he's he's had a lousy defense in front of him for the past like four or five years so um i'm a huge supporter of anderson i think that the Maple Leafs are going to be uh, a lot better defensively this year. And I, th I think all the people that are trashing on Anderson are going to see, like, okay, now that you have a real defense in front of him, this guy's going to be putting up like a 2-5-0 goals against. And, and his save percentage is going to be around 920. And you're going to be like, wait a second. And it's like, no, he's been doing this. He's been doing this for the past four years it's just because the defense has been so bad that you haven't noticed it but I, i'm a huge anderson supporter i think he's a great goaltender top 10 in the league for sure and as far as projections go man this canadian i'm thinking about i have to do my prediction video at some point in the next week or so 
I cannot predict this Canadian division. Mm -hmm. Like, you've got Montreal significantly improved. You've got Edmonton with McDavid and Dry Saddle. You've got Vancouver, who looks like all of a sudden they could be a powerhouse team. You've got Toronto, who looks like they could be a powerhouse team. You've got Calgary, who, you know, is always kind of a coin flip team. Some years they're really good. Some years they fall flat on your face. You have no idea what they're going to do. Um, and then you've you've got Winnipeg and Ottawa, who I think probably are kind of out of it. But only four teams make the playoffs. Only four teams make the playoffs. Someone that's really good is going to get left out. Um, I have a certain team I'm leaning towards for that right now, and it's not the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I do think Toronto does make the playoffs. Um, and I think they have they have a shot to to at least win one, if not two rounds. I mean, with the playoff set up this year with the top four teams making it and the first two rounds being also within division, I don't see any reason why Toronto can't come out of that Canadian division. But at the same time, I could see them losing to Edmonton or I could see them losing to Vancouver. Um, if Carey Price gets hot, I could see them getting, you know, kind of it stolen away by by the Canadians if Price comes in and shuts them out, like for two games or something like that. So it, it's tough predicting predicting this season is going to be a gong show. Trying trying to come up with what these predictions are going to be, but I I could certainly see Toronto making the playoffs, and I think they could come out of that Canadian division. They're certainly good enough on paper to do that. Yeah, um, I got it. We're going to be doing one too. I've been, I did it with one with Peyton already. You might want to check that out. We did the East Division one together on our predictions as well. And I agree, this Canadian division's a beast to be able to freaking figure out who's going to be the number one. I mean, Carey Price in Montreal could steal it. Like, when's the last time he had a defense like this in front of him? You know, Anderson again as well. Like you said, how good can he be with the with a better defense in front of him? It is going to be. Uh, very tough to, 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 to division to predict. I think Toronto will definitely be there. No doubt about that. Um, and thank you guys for coming in and uh, doing this, this fine programming with us. It's been fantastic. We're actually at the end, if you can believe that. Um, Peyton on the radio. Uh, off the wall, John. I almost forgot your name off the wall, Hockey John. <laughs> We're all part of the Steel Flyers Network, www.steelflyers.com. Make sure you're checking that in the new year because it is going to be off the chain. Oh, yeah. And uh, you guys are off the chain. And you, uh, thanks for coming in. Hit the subscribe and the bell. Go check these guys out because they are some of the finest in the land. I hope you enjoyed this programming. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.